From a distance, it's a sight we know and love. A deep, beautiful azure blue dot, reminiscent of our own home as seen by the Apollo astronauts. A serene marble of profound blue hanging in the silent, velvet blackness of space. It's a color that speaks to us of vast, life-giving oceans and clear, tranquil skies. It looks from 64 light years away, like a paradise, a welcoming haven in the cosmic dark. But get closer, and the beautiful illusion shatters into a billion pieces of terrifying reality. This is not a world of tranquil oceans. The deep blue color comes not from water, but from an atmosphere laced with vaporized rock and swirling silicate particles. The winds here are a perpetual, planet-circling hurricane, moving at seven times the speed of sound. And the rain? The rain isn't water. It is molten glass, falling sideways at over 4,500 miles per hour. This is the exoplanet HD 1897-3b, and it is, without question, one of the most fascinating and utterly terrifying worlds ever discovered by humanity. It's a beautiful blue marble of certain death. To understand this world, we have to go back to its discovery in 2005. At the time, the hunt for exoplanets, planets orbiting stars other than our sun, was still in its relative infancy. Astronomers weren't yet able to directly see these distant worlds. They were too small, too dim, and too close to the blinding glare of their parent stars. Instead, they had to hunt for them indirectly, looking for the subtle, telltale signs of their presence. The primary method, and the one that found HD 189733b, is known as the transit method. Imagine a powerful distant lighthouse shining a beam of light directly at you. If a tiny gnat flies in front of that beam, you won't see the gnat itself, but you would be able to detect a minuscule, almost imperceptible dip in the lighthouse's brightness for the brief moment the gnat crosses the light. The transit method works on the exact same principle. Astronomers use powerful telescopes to stare at a single star for long periods, meticulously measuring its brightness. If a planet's orbit happens to be perfectly aligned from our point of view, it will periodically pass in front of its star, causing a tiny, regular, and predictable dip in the star's light. The size of that dip tells astronomers how big the planet is, and the time between dips reveals how long it takes the planet to complete one orbit. It was a French team of astronomers, using this very method, who first detected the telltale dimming of the star HD 189733, a star slightly smaller and cooler than our own sun located about 64.5 light-years away in the small northern constellation of Vulpecula the Fox. The dip in starlight was significant, about 3%, and it repeated with astonishing regularity, once every 2.2 Earth days. This was the first clue that they had found something extreme. An orbital period that short meant the planet had to be orbiting incredibly close to its star, far closer than Mercury orbits our Sun. The immense dip in brightness told them the planet was a giant, slightly larger than our own Jupiter. This discovery placed HD 189733b into a now famous class of exoplanets known as hot Jupiters. These are gas giants, like the king of our own solar system, but they live a life of extreme proximity and violence. While our Jupiter takes a leisurely 12 years to orbit the Sun, a hot Jupiter completes its year in a matter of mere days or even hours. They are locked in a fiery embrace with their parent stars, a proximity that creates some of the most hellish environments imaginable. These worlds were among the first exoplanets ever discovered, and they shattered our early simplistic theories of how solar systems form. We thought giant planets could only form in the cold outer regions of a solar system, like they did in ours. Hot Jupiters proved that planetary formation and migration was a much more chaotic and violent process than we had ever imagined. HD 189733b was a perfect specimen of this bizarre and terrifying class of planet, but as astronomers would soon learn, its true horrors were only just beginning to be uncovered. It wasn't just another hot Jupiter, it was a cosmic laboratory for extreme weather, the science of a cobalt sky. For years after its discovery, HD 189733b was just a set of numbers, a mass, a radius, an orbital period. We knew it was there, but we had no idea what it actually looked like. The beautiful artist's conceptions of a deep blue world were just that, art. Then, 
In 2013, science caught up with the imagination. A team of astronomers, using the incredible power of the Hubble Space Telescope, set out to do something that had never been done before. Determine the true color of a world orbiting another star. The technique they used is one of the most powerful tools in modern astronomy, a method that allows us to dissect the very air of alien worlds from across an unimaginable gulf of space. It's called transmission spectroscopy. The logic is as brilliant as it is simple. As the exoplanet transits in front of its star, a tiny, almost infinitesimal fraction of the starlight doesn't just get blocked. It actually passes through the upper layers of the planet's atmosphere. As this starlight shines through the alien air, the different gases and molecules in that atmosphere will absorb very specific wavelengths or colors of the light. Every chemical, whether it's water vapor, methane or sodium, has a unique spectral fingerprint, a barcode of light that it absorbs. By capturing the star's light before, during and after the transit, astronomers can subtract the normal starlight from the light that passed through the atmosphere. What's left over is that chemical barcode, a coded message that reveals the composition of the planet's sky. The team studying HD 189733b used Hubble to do something slightly different, but just as clever. They measured the planet's albedo, which is simply the amount of light it reflects at different colors. They observed the system as the planet passed behind its star, a secondary eclipse. By measuring the total light of the star and planet together, just before the planet disappeared, and then measuring the light of just the star while the planet was hidden, they could calculate exactly how much light the planet itself was giving off. And when they did this across the visible spectrum, they found a stunning result. The planet was absorbing most of the red and green light that hit it, but it was reflecting a huge amount of blue light. If you were floating in space looking at it, HD 189733b would appear a deep, rich cobalt blue. But why? On Earth, the blue color of our sky comes from a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering, where the nitrogen and oxygen molecules in our air are the perfect size to scatter blue light from the sun more effectively than red light. Our oceans are blue primarily because they are reflecting the blue sky above them. On HD 189733b, the cause is far more exotic and sinister. The scorching temperatures in its atmosphere are hot enough to vaporize rock and metals. The leading theory is that the planet's atmosphere is laced with clouds not of water vapor, but of silicate particles, essentially tiny microscopic droplets of molten glass. These silicate particles would be the perfect size and composition to scatter blue light in a similar way to Earth's atmosphere while absorbing the other colors. The beautiful blue hue of this distant world is not the color of life-giving water, but the color of vaporized stone. This discovery was a monumental achievement, but it was just the beginning of our understanding of this planet's extreme atmosphere. Thanks to its close orbit, HD 189733b is tidally locked to its star. This is the same phenomenon that keeps one side of our moon perpetually facing the Earth. On HD 189733b, this means one hemisphere is locked in eternal blistering daylight, while the other is trapped in endless starless night. The day side of the planet is a furnace, with temperatures reaching a staggering 1800 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1,000 degrees Celsius. This is easily hot enough to melt lead, aluminum, and yes, even rock itself. The cooler night side is still an unimaginable inferno, with temperatures hovering around 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Using the technique of transmission spectroscopy, scientists have been able to probe this hellish atmosphere even further. They found the clear spectral signatures of sodium, a common element in gas giants. They've detected carbon dioxide and, perhaps more surprisingly, methane. The presence of methane was a puzzle, as the intense heat and radiation from the star should break it down quickly. Its continued existence hints at some unknown dynamic chemical processes churning away deep within the planet's atmosphere. And most tantalizingly, they have found the undeniable signature of water vapor. Finding water on another world is always a thrilling moment in astronomy, as it's the one ingredient we consider essential for life as we know it. But on HD 189733b, the presence of water is a cruel joke. The scorching temperatures and crushing pressures 
mean it could never exist as a life-sustaining liquid. Instead, it exists as superheated steam, just another volatile gas in a toxic, turbulent, and utterly uninhabitable sky. The planet has some of the ingredients for life, but they are mixed together in the most lethal recipe imaginable. We had a picture of a tidally locked, blisteringly hot world with a deep blue sky filled with vaporized rock and superheated steam. But one key component of the planet's weather was still a mystery. The wind. On Earth, temperature differences drive wind. The contrast between the hot equator and the cold poles creates the great jet streams and weather systems that circle our globe. Astronomers reasoned that on a tidally locked planet like HD 189733b, the colossal temperature difference between the permanent dayside inferno and the slightly less infernal nightside must generate winds on a scale that would dwarf anything in our solar system. The question was, how could you possibly measure wind speed on a planet that is trillions of miles away? The answer came from a different kind of spectroscopy, using a ground-based instrument in Chile called the High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planet Searcher, or HARPS. This instrument is so sensitive, it can detect the tiny wobble a star makes as it's pulled on by the gravity of an orbiting planet. But astronomers adapted its use to measure something else. As the planet transits its star, they didn't just look at the combined atmospheric signature. They focused on the spectral fingerprint of one specific element they knew was there, sodium. As the planet rotates, one side of it is moving towards us, and the other side is moving away. Thanks to the Doppler effect, the light from the sodium atoms on the side moving towards us is slightly blue-shifted, compressed to a higher frequency, while the light from the sodium on the side moving away is slightly red-shifted, stretched to a lower frequency. In a planet with no wind, this shift would be caused only by the planet's own rotation, but in an atmosphere with powerful winds, the winds themselves would add a huge additional Doppler shift to the light. By measuring the sodium signature at the very beginning of the transit, when the windy morning edge of the planet comes into view, and comparing it to the signature at the very end, when the windy evening edge is about to disappear, they could isolate the Doppler shift caused by the wind alone. The result, published in 2015, was staggering, even for a planet already known for its extremes. The astronomers clocked the wind speeds on HD 189733b at over 4,500 miles per hour, or about 2 kilometers per second. To put that into perspective, the speed of sound on Earth is about 767 miles per hour. These winds are moving at Mach 7. The strongest winds ever recorded in an earthly hurricane are around 200 miles per hour. The winds on this alien world are more than 20 times faster than the most violent storms our own planet can produce. These are not winds. This is a planetary shockwave. Now we can finally put all the pieces together to create the most extreme weather report in the known universe. On the permanent day side of HD 189733b, the intense heat from its nearby star, thousands of degrees Fahrenheit, vaporizes the silicate minerals in the atmosphere's clouds into a rock gas. This superheated gas is then caught in the planet's immense thermal engine. The extreme temperature difference between the day side and the night side creates a colossal pressure gradient which drives this superheated, silicate-laced atmosphere from the day side to the night side in a perpetual supersonic jet stream. As this Mach 7 wind howls around the planet into the relative cool of the night side, the silicate vapor begins to cool and condense, just as water vapor on Earth cools and condenses into droplets of liquid water to form rain clouds, the silicate vapor on HD 189733b cools and condenses into droplets of liquid glass. These tiny blobs of molten glass then begin to fall as rain. But this is not a gentle rain. It is a rain of molten glass being blasted sideways at 4,500 miles per hour by a supersonic wind. It is a perpetual planet-circling tempest of flying glass shards, a storm that would shred any conceivable spacecraft or any conceivable life form to its constituent atoms in a fraction of a second. The beautiful, serene blue that we see from afar is, in reality, the color of this deadly, glittering storm. It is a world where the weather itself is made of daggers, moving faster than a speeding bullet. Why do we study hell? 
Given this portrait of a nightmarish, uninhabitable world, a fair question arises. Why do we spend so much time, effort and expensive telescope time studying such a place? We know there's no life there. We know we can never go there. So why do we care about a distant planet where it rains glass sideways? The answer is that worlds like HD 1897-33b are crucial cosmic laboratories. They are the extreme cases, the outliers that allow us to test and refine our fundamental understanding of how planets and their atmospheres work. Our models of atmospheric physics are largely based on the planets we have in our own solar system, but this is a tiny and potentially biased sample size. Studying a hot Jupiter like HD 189733b pushes our theories to their absolute limits. Can our models accurately predict the temperatures, the chemical reactions, the wind speeds on a world so unlike anything we know? When our models succeed, it gives us confidence that we truly understand the underlying physics. When they fail, it points to new and exciting phenomena that we haven't yet accounted for, forcing us to go back and create better, more comprehensive theories. More importantly, the incredible techniques that have been pioneered to study this alien hellscape are the very same techniques we are now using to search for life elsewhere. Learning how to perform transmission spectroscopy to tease out the chemical signature of vaporized rock is a crucial step towards one day using the same method to find the chemical signature of life, biosignatures like oxygen and methane existing together in the atmosphere of a small rocky Earth-like world. Learning how to measure Mach 7 winds on a gas giant gives us the tools and expertise to one day measure the gentler, more subtle winds on a potential Earth 2.0. HD 189733b is a scientific stepping stone. It is a spectacular and terrifying training ground, a place where we can hone our instruments and our theories before we point them at the targets that represent humanity's greatest hope. That hope is now being realized by the next generation of observatories, most notably the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. With its massive mirror and incredible sensitivity, especially in the infrared, JWST is able to perform spectroscopy with a precision that was once unimaginable. It is already dissecting the atmospheres of exoplanets large and small, revealing their chemical makeup in stunning detail. The ultimate goal is to find a small rocky planet in the habitable zone of its star, the region where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist on the surface, and use JWST to search its atmosphere for the telltale chemical imbalances that could only be produced by life. This is why studying worlds like HD 189733b is so profoundly important. It provides a crucial point of contrast. It is the anti-Earth, a stark and violent reminder of how diverse and often hostile the universe can be. In a galaxy of hundreds of billions of stars and likely trillions of planets, we are sure to find many more worlds of unimaginable terror. But we are also likely to find worlds of unimaginable beauty and perhaps even worlds that harbour life. The hellish landscape of HD 189733b serves to deepen our appreciation for our own tranquil blue marble, a world with gentle breezes and life-sustaining rain of liquid water. It reminds us how precious and how potentially rare our own home is. In the end, the story of HD 189733b is a perfect encapsulation of the modern age of astronomy. It's a story of incredible technological achievement, allowing us to characterize a world trillions of miles away with stunning accuracy. It's a story of profound mystery, revealing planetary environments more extreme and more alien than science fiction writers ever dreamed. And it's a story of hope, because every piece of knowledge we gain from this beautiful, terrifying world is another step on our long journey to answer one of the oldest and most fundamental questions humanity has ever asked. Are we alone? HD 189733b may not be a potential home, but it is a spectacular and terrifying lesson in planetary science, a cosmic signpost that points the way towards future discoveries that may one day change everything we know about our place in the universe.